And as alluded to earlier, next up we have talk time, Thailand equity crowdfunding regulations and best practice. So the way we envisage this uh, talk time is that it's going to be an interactive and engaging discussion between our two speakers who will basically be outlining the legal landscape surrounding equity crowdfunding here in Thailand. So the only way to make that interactive and engaging would requires full participation from you guys to post up questions as well. So I'm going to remind you again, please kindly download the application so you can participate fully. And I'll just briefly introduce you guys to two speakers. First up, we have Kun Tawachai Pityatso from the Securities and Exchange Commission. He's the Senior Director of Legal Counsel and Development Department and has worked on many, many major legal reforms. He's also the Secretary to the Capital Market Supervisory Board, the Commission's spokesperson, and fittingly, he is in charge of developing and drafting the regulatory framework for equity crowdfunding. And joining Kun Tawachai will be Kun Cha Krit Jan Ryung Sakun senior partner at M8VC Company Limited. Kun Chakrit has truly been a serial entrepreneur in multiple industries. He's actively engaged with the startups and always catch up with hundreds of them, mentoring, coaching them in a single year. And he started the Academy for Entrepreneurship training this year too. So please give a warm welcome to the two gentlemen. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm uh, Chakrit, uh, and every a um, uh, uh, lot of uh, startup in Thailand call me P White or Mr. White. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I think uh, yesterday, since yesterday, Kun uh, Hongxin just uh, mentioned me on the stage, and uh, everyone might be curious at uh, who uh, Mr. White is. Yeah, I think it's uh, the time to introduce myself that uh, I'm working with uh, a lot of startup in Thailand uh, for uh, three years. I've been the startup myself before in uh, 2009, working with uh, a lot of um, uh, enterprise in Thailand. After we growing, I um, uh, spend my time, a lot of time, to coaching and um, mentoring a startup in Thailand. Uh, so um, I'm so, uh, I, I met the startup about uh, 200 or 300 teams a year. Every day I have to talk to startup. Uh, so I think this is a, it's a good time to um, uh, regulate or, or starting something like uh, crowdfunding in Thailand. Thank you so much, Kun White. Uh, my name is Tua Chai, working with the SEC Thailand. Actually, um, I'm very excited to be here today because I'm pretty much I'm a lawyer, work for the state agency. I haven't have any experience you know, in crowdfunding in practice, of course, and it's very good, very delightful to have Kun White here because his experience could help us you know, explore more about the development of the regulatory, regulatory framework. And so many people just ask me and many of our colleagues, why would the SEC like to enter into this field? Why, why do we have to do something about crowdfunding, whether or not it would be fall within uh, even our jurisdiction or our mission as the capital market regulators? Uh, let, let me put it this way. Uh, now, we all knows that SME or startup is very important. They are very crucial to the economic development of our countries and every economy, I think. And the thing is that maybe we didn't put enough effort to help them in terms of the capital markets because in the past, we could you know, develop the, a lot of framework that would support basically the large company are the ones that are ready to fulfill with the regulatory uh, framework. It is costly, it's very difficult, just like if a company would like to go for an IPO, 
they need to do the full stretch of the regulations, they need to have the financial advisor, they need to provide the statutory prospectus, you know, a lot of things that cost a lot. This is pos impossible for the SMB to do that, to access the channel to respond. That's why we are here, and we're trying to make the capital market to serve all sides of the business, including the SME. And it's not like that the SEC would like to extend the jurisdiction of the supervision to regulate or supervise the crowdfunding. What we want to do is we like to develop the framework to support the SME, to help them to have the funding access to develop the business, with the business expansion, and that would help the economy of the country as a whole. That is the idea. And if you go back like a year ago, the first time that the Thai SEC just like came to know about the crowdfunding, it was when the strategy team of the SEC, they were the, fir the very first team that introduced the word crowdfunding in our organization. They studied this thing and they report, present this concept to our SEC commission. It was when I was first heard of the word crowdfunding. And we developed, you know, gradually about the concept of the regulations. We invited the expert, Mr. Jason Bess. He was invited to our office last year, including Mr. Douglas Elinoff as well. Many people mention about these two guys as the godfathers of the crowdfunding. We learned a lot from them as well. So today, as Kun Wai mentioned, as Kun Hong Sin mentioned, we'd like to, of course, this is not supposed to be the public hearing or something, but we think this is kind of useful that we kind of have the participation and get the insight to, or some question, some comments, maybe something that I may not be heard of or I couldn't answer, it would be useful to develop the regulations. So uh, maybe I, I should start with what is the concept of the regulations of the crowdfunding that we propose. Basically, it will involve its three parts. The first one, of course, the issuers, the one that needs funds. Uh, for the issuers, of course, uh, they must be the Thai corporations, either limited company or public limited company. They both could raise funds through crowdfunding. They could raise funds without limit of the uh, offerings if they want to sell it to institutional investors, uh, the high net worth investors, or angel investors. But if they'd like to raise funds to the retail investors, it will be limited. Not, uh, now the number is not exceeding 40 million baht, it's about 1.2 something US dollar, approximately, within 24 months periods. And the individual limits of the retail investor to invest in the uh, offering would be 50,000 uh, 50, baht. That's about 1,500 US dollars. This is the idea, just to let you know that the issuer must be the Thai companies. They could be either limited or public companies. They could respond without limit if you respond to specific uh, investors. But for the retail investor, of course, there would be the limit put on the investment. And that is the idea. And the company need not to have to file with the SEC. They have to disclose the information to the funding portal. It's that would be the second part of the regulations is very important ones. Because the funding portal would be the operation of the, the operators that provides the uh, access to both issuers that needs one, and also the investor who are interested in investing in these issuers, they are some kind of intermediaries. The idea is that we would regulate the funding portal as a new type of the securities business. What does this mean? Once the funding portal will be regulated as a securities business, they need to acquire the license, you know, because we want to facilitate the business. We want to have the opportunities for investors to make new kind of investment. There must be someone who is responsible for doing this, you know, and the funding portal must provide the system, you know, just like definitely the securities. Many of the speakers spoke of this issue yesterday that, you know, the securities is very important. That is the one. Uh, the other thing is that being the securities business uh, companies, one of 
one of the securities business, you need to comply with the business conduct. Uh, in general, of course, to do business with honesty, with the standard professionalism, and uh, you need to have some kind of registered capital in terms of prudential regulation as well. And uh, that is, okay, in brief now, we should, I, I should stop here, not to go too much in detail, just to let the participation from the floor. And for the last part is the investors. As I mentioned earlier, investors would be uh, categorized into four types. Institutional ones, high net worth, angel investors, and retail investors. And this is pretty much the concept in brief. And I'd like maybe you could invite, we'd have some comments on this and we could yeah, go I more have, I have a lot, in a lot of questions myself. <laughs> yes. uh, as the uh, startup myself, as the investor, uh, angel investor, yeah, uh, I have, I, I'm bringing a lot of questions from, uh, from, from startup ecosystem. Uh, come, to, to, uh, come to ask the SEC, something that I uh, like, um, uh, the, the, the rules um, for the startup that um, uh, in some draft in, in, in the draft uh, we have uh, we have one rule that uh, the startup should be two years operate mm, should be two years operated in terms of uh, startup if uh, if we stay in the market for two years and we still uh, finding uh, some fund, like a um, uh, million US dollar. I think it's, it's not, uh, the idea is not working. Uh. The business is not working. Because uh, if you're doing good, your idea is good, you're doing well, um, some angel investor or some VC will find you, will find you. Yeah, and uh, you invest directly to you in maybe six months or a year. So uh, if we wait for uh, two years uh, for the startup and uh, coming to the crowdfunding, maybe it's a, it's a, we, we, we will find, we, 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 will might, we might face um, uh, the B grade, the, the B grade or C grade startup is not the, not the prime. Uh, one uh, to 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 raise the fund. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, the the comments we we received the similar comments from the public hearings on the previous focus group meeting as well. It's about the track records of the issuers that will be uh, eligible to raise fund to the crowdfunding portals. The, we initially, you know, uh, uh, the SEC are kind of familiar with the track records of the IPOs companies that in three years, or two years, uh, in, uh, depends on what you want to be listed on the uh, set or MLI. At the very first draft of the uh, hearing, we proposed the two years as the track records because uh, we think that uh, we would see some kind of operations going on for the issuers that we would be comfortable enough to let them raise funds through the funding portal. But we received some comments, just like Kun Wai has said, that whether or not it would be applicable <laughs> to this kind of fundraising. Because if you would like to help the startup, you wait for two years, maybe it's not you know, workable in practice. Uh, we went on to have some discussion, internal discussion within the SEC. And it would be possible that we will remove this minimum of track records. That means the startup they already have the initial idea to present to the, the uh, investor through the funding portal. They would be eligible and let the market decide whether the funding portal would allow these uh, companies in these states to be listed or to be disseminate the information through the funding portal. And also uh, let the investor decide whether they would want to invest in this company at this stage. It's, I don't know whether it makes sense to you all. Yes, you yes, yeah, let me let me share some uh, some ideas. That um, for the startup, um, it is a very high risk business. Yeah, we, we we have to understand. We have to declare to the investor that um, the possibility to fail, it's uh, more than I think seventy uh, yeah, percent. This is uh, this is uh, the, the the real uh, startup. Yeah. 
and um, in a, a very early stage of the startup, like uh, we, 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 we say, uh, we call the uh, PowerPoint uh, state. The PowerPoint state is just only the idea. They have only idea, a good idea. They, they, didn't, they, they didn't have even the prototype yet. They didn't know uh, how uh, to create it or how to develop it. In that early stage, this is um, the, the, the role of uh, angel investor or uh, pre-seed investment. The angel, they, they, they might throw maybe uh, uh, 10,000 US dollar for a team to survive for six months to make it happen, to make the prototype happen. That's the first stage, very first stage of the startup. We don't know uh, they will uh, survive in business or not, but it, we throw the money in. So, so seemingly, uh, it's better to uh, have the uh, issuers perhaps develop the idea into yeah. at least have the prototype. Yes, it's ready to, co to be commercialized, yeah. and it will be appropriate, more appropriate to allow yes. them to yes. rest run through different portals. Yes, yes, I think I think so because um, uh, for uh, for for the startup state, for the investment state, we have uh, angel, very rich state. We have uh, another state that we we call pre Serie A. The pre Serie A is a uh, very very um, uh, standard for uh, um, uh, international. For for the pre Serie A is maybe the below a million US dollar. So, so uh, in other words, it's basically not involved with the period of time. It's not yes. on year to years yeah. uh, to need a prototype. I think it's just, uh, we, we can define the stage of, uh -huh. the, of the startup uh -huh. that they, they have prototype and start to doing business. Th in that time, they might uh, need a uh, million dollar or uh, uh, 500K to do their business before they go into Serie A funding or Serie B funding. Yeah. I think this is, um, this, this is a position for the uh, invest, investor, that, uh, uh, like a crowdfunding investment, to coming in. Because it's tr uh, in, in Thailand, we have a lot of VCs coming here. For now, we have, uh, I think we have uh, more than uh, 2 billion baht ready to invest in the startup. But we lack of a team because we have to build a team to 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 meet their uh, their criteria. Okay. Mm. Why you mentioned a lot about the numbers? How about the number investment limit for the retail investor? Fifty thousand baht. Yeah, I think it's no, as as the as Is the investor as the investor. If I um, uh, invest in, in in the startup one startup for uh, fifty thousand baht. And uh, the return in next two or three years, if I'm, I'm lucky, um, I will I will got uh, maybe five x. It's it's very I think it's it's, it's not enough for for for, for the for oh. the investor sense. All right, yeah. I think it's, it's too too few for for, for it's it's not uh -huh. it's, it's not challenged. Oh, all right. Well, uh, let me share with you all about the this kind of magic number. And uh, we receive a lot of comments as well. And somebody, some startup said that, oh, we are in the early stage. We are not ready to deal with 100 inve uh, uh, investors. So somehow, we only need institutional investors, angels, or high net worth, because uh, they have to think of the establishing the companies who set up the operations to develop the product, commercialize the things. They are not ready to listen to the voice of many investors, too many investors. So some, some bodies tend to think that 50,000, probably they, they, they are not so concerned about that because they focus on the uh, big investor only. And uh, well, but in terms of the regulations, the SEC think that we are, we are not going to decide for the investor whether they should uh, offer to only institution, private first and angel only. But we, are, we, we allow them to offer to the retail investor as well and let the market decide again whether the issuer would like to deal with many investors to deal with the crowd 
whether or not they whether they would want to deal with the uh, in only institution, just a few of them, you know, just to have them have the time to focus on the development of the companies. And what do you think? I think it's just, uh, it's, it 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 might pop uh, some um, some some problems or some question again. Let me say that uh, one uh, like yesterday we have pitching. We, 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 we saw some startup need uh, a million US dollars to growing their business. If uh, we going to crowdfunding for them, uh, they're going to portal and asking for a million US dollars. And uh, after um, um, uh, PR or marketing, uh, some uh, VC or some institution interested and they want to get all uh, a million dollar. Mm. Um, it's just, I, I think it's not the crowdfunding anymore. Mm. I think it's, just, it's, it's, it's a direct investment from the VC or f from the institution. <coughs> they might use this channel uh, to, to get in to the, uh, to the startup, to the interested startup. So uh, it will be the uh, challenge. Wow. Yes, and uh, and how about the the uh, individual investor that uh, they want to invest also? Well, so this <laughs> kind of issue would be, you know, many people would have them different opinions. But for the regulations that we would propose, that we would allow all type of investors, the difference. The only difference is that if you want to sell to retail investors, that would have the investment limit for individual. And that, that would be the only difference, you know. And how about the, actually, I am, I'm a, probably I was too excited, I forgot to mention that. Actually, the crowdfunding that falls within the SEC jurisdiction is the only one that we call investment-based crowdfunding. That is the, when the issuers offer the stock shares or the ventures to the investors for the reward or donation based or peer to peer lending is not considered the offering of securities so the SEC don't have the jurisdiction over the types of crowdfunding. But anyway the crowd the funding portal that would be allowed to do the investment based uh, crowdfunding, they would not be prohibited from providing the service on donation, reward or peer to peer lending. Okay, that would be the scope. And well, uh, as, uh, when I mentioned about the securities, whether um, the, issue, the issue would be allowed to offer both equities, shares, or debt in the form of debentures. At the very first step, let, let me share with you that we, we would focus on the equity only because we kind of believe that uh, the start of the SME wouldn't be ready to issue the debentures because they have to have the obligations to pay the interest every month, every year, and they have to have the maturities of the instrument that they have to return all the principal. What if they, they don't have enough money to do that? It would cause the default. And in the very later stage that we listen to more people and we, we, we uh, organize the focus group, many people sent, trying to, to, to uh, uh, give the comments that uh, we would allow them to decide whether they would go with the equity or that's because it's kind of business decision. It's not our uh, no, say, the regulators' decisions to say whether they could do that or they couldn't do that in, in terms of the type of instrument. So the proposed regulation would allow them both to, uh, to, to the issuers to issue either equity or debt. And do you think it makes sense? I think it just makes sense because uh, sometimes uh, startup they don't want to they, they know that uh, they they got uh, they have something in hand, and they they don't want to share or split their share uh, to, uh, to 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 other investor or more investor. Uh, as me, you may know that uh, a lot of startup they 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 have something in mind that uh, uh, the ownership of the of the business is very very important for them. They don't want to um, uh, maybe take the only ten percent in a billion dollar business anymore. It just might be the the uh, uh, the mantra in the last uh, ten years, but now they want 
they, they want uh, their ownership. They want to uh, to take their ownership and and protect it. So uh, the debt instrument might be the, the, the another channel or another tool for them. It's, it's good to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, for the that's pretty much about the issues. Let me talk more about the funding portal. You will be the one that kind of yes, interested yes, in yes, you know interested. applying for the funding portal license Cup, if it's yes. in, in place, right? And what do you think about the the hearings about the what we have uh, asked for the opinion about the funding portals? Uh, the one issue is that uh, we see some comments is the duties of the funding portal to to do some kind of due diligence. Because uh, we kind of open to the issuers. We're going to be relaxed on the qualification of the issuers. So we rely on the funding portals to do some due diligence yes. to check whether uh, they are in existing, they are not a fraud, they are not a paper companies, they have the real projects, something. It's not the guarantee of they're not going to be fail. It's not that kind of thing. But just to make sure that the company is real, you know. I think it's uh, for the uh, uh, crowdfunding portal. Might be uh, the specialist in in some way because uh, the, the, as you know, the startup is a real relax business. Uh, after the first uh, uh, few months, and uh, the risk will be lower. And after they are, uh, they launch their business, the risk might be lower again. So uh, the one uh, uh, investor cannot understand it uh, from the paper, from the uh, from 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 the internet. They cannot find the fact of the startup. Like yesterday, uh, uh, t ten teams from yesterday. Some teams have only the PowerPoint. Some team they already have uh, the, the the business, but they're doing well on the stage very well on the stage and the kid convinced to invest and how to define how to separate them and how to uh, uh, measure them that uh, which they or which product that uh, they already launched or they already in the market I think it's just, uh, the protection for uh, the, the investor protection if we use the um, uh, crowdfunding portal to do that job that I think this is uh, really, really important. Oh, okay. So, I uh, I, I kind of agree that it's very important, but whether or not it would be too burdensome or too hard for the funding portal to do I that, see. because I see, I, see. I think uh, we we talk a lot uh, in 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 the industry. Uh, some of my partner in the financial business, they told me, "Py, is 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 the margin or uh, the fee is too low." How can we survive if uh, we take the margin, uh, the same margin as the IPO, but in the very, very low volume, like uh, like a million US dollar for uh, raise the fund? So we come up with uh, the idea that uh, some portal might uh, waive their fee if they have to. They have a chance. They have a chance to invest first, or they have a chance to get uh, the equity first. Maybe two percent in the in the issuer. This might be work. This might be the the, the uh, it, uh, create some intention for uh, for the portal for some portal to to survive. Okay, this is very interesting because this will come with some legal. Uh, issue as well because and uh, under the securities law, uh, securities company uh, I mentioned earlier that the funding portal would be regulated as the securities business, and they do f have to be subject to the minimum registered capital. The Act said that any securities company that keep the client asset or uh, invest in securities. They need to have at least one a uh, hundred million, but so for the, for the registered idea. capital, and we come with the issue of the access for the operator that would like to run the funding portal because 
uh, if we go back for the very first stage that we think of these kind of uh, issues, we thought of we would allow the securities firm with a full license that have like a, a, fifth, a 500 million baht of the registered capital or above to run the funding portal. Many people said that no, 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 that's wrong because it's going to, you know, shut down the opportunities for the, many uh, business operators that are interested in uh, doing the funding portal, but they don't have the five, uh, uh, million, uh, 500 million baht, something like that. So we kind of see that, okay, for the securities companies, the uh, minimum, the smallest amount would be one million baht of the registered capital. That's for the financial advisory service. 500 million baht for the full license. For the funding, for the funding portal, that would be somewhere in between. That's very high range anyway. Yeah, it's still not decided in the office, but, but it's not gonna be that huge. But if the funding, any funding portal would like to invest in the issuers that they post on their own portal, they would be required to have at least 100 million. Uh, or, or one, I have to say, uh, yeah, 100 million baht. Yeah, kind of confused the numbers, sorry. Yeah, for the registered capital. I think it's for, for, uh, for the portal. I think it's it's maybe good idea that uh, we have um, many many kinds of portal. Some portal might be take only a fee, uh, and uh, they do very well in in in, in their job. It's okay, and uh, some portal might be raise their capital for 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 holding license. I think it's uh, it's also a good idea. That because uh, we, we will we will get um, as, um, 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 many series of uh, the crowdfunding portal in the market. It's just, um, it's this might be it's it, it's it's a choice mm -hmm. for the startup th uh, themselves also. Yeah. All right. So I I personally we we discuss this issue a lot in the SEC as well because we think that allowing a funding portal to invest in the issuers that they post information on their own website or their own facilities it is kind of a good thing because they have skin in the game you know if they're going to sell the products to the others they invest in that product as well it's, pr it's, pr it's kind of good but uh, as I mentioned there would be some consequence that they would be required to have the larger registered capital yeah, that's the thing. I think we we, we back to uh, very early uh, uh, days of uh, um, Thailand uh, financial uh, institution. That's uh, in that time, no one have uh, any uh, track records mm -hmm. in that time. So we have to start and we have to build a track record. Right. For now, we have um, a broker that uh, or, or the institution that uh, very very legend okay. in, in in the market. Well, goodbye. Do you think it's good that to open the floor for the questions yes, or please. the comments right yes. now? Because we spend some time to get <laughs> okay, already. Okay, okay. If any of the audience would like to have the question and comments, please. Thank you for the discussion. Very interesting. Um, I'm new to the game, so excuse me if the question appears to be basic. Um, just now you talked about required registered capital for potential portals. What is the rationale behind the need for any capital? Um, I'm, uh, you, you cited uh, two uh, models. One, a portal that invests and, and basically a portal doesn't. Um, for a portal that, that doesn't invest, you mentioned a range, potentially between 1 million baht and 500 million baht. Why do you need any um, if, if, if there is no working capital required, number one? Uh, two, for the, uh, for, the, for the investing model, um, you mentioned 100 million baht. Why is that necessary? Um, I, I'm just interested to know what the rationale behind those uh, suggestions are. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Well, I think the requirement of the registered capital for the regulated enti entities is usually set in the law, in the Thai law. I understand, I personally understand that it would kind of guarantee some kind of uh, stability of the financial condition of the business operators. We can see that whether you are the securities companies, insurance companies, or the commercial banks, they all would be required at least some minimum uh, registered capital. Or, or any kind of you know, uh, capital requirements. For the 100, uh, 1 million, uh, 100 million Thai baht for the minimum registered capital, it is written in the law and it's required for the securities companies that run the securities uh, business in the category of the uh, underwriters, securities deal dealing, and any companies that keep the client asset. Be uh, is the creating members on the ex of the exchange and invest in securities. This is written in the law. I think that it would, uh, it would require the higher registered capital because it involves with some kind of risk and the laws tend to, to uh, think that this kind of operator should have more registered, registered capital than those that did not engage in these kind of activities. So it's, it's kind of difficult because one is written in the law, the, way, the only way to remove that is to amend the law as part of the legislation. It's, it's pretty difficult. So we kind of uh, try to work on it. If the funding portal would not uh, want to invest in securities, they wouldn't be requ uh, required to have the, the registered capital of the 100 million baht. But if they do, we, we, we can't do anything because it's written in the law. So. I don't know whether I answer your question. <laughs> you have, but you, you, what you're basically saying is that it's the law, so we have to do it. Um, yeah. I think what we, would be useful um, is, uh, is your idea in terms of what, how it should be. Yeah. And then those of us who are responsible for writing and changing laws can, can, can then think about what is appropriate um, in an ideal world. Um, but uh, behind all of that is, 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 the one, is one singular question that I wanted to ask. What is typically in existing portals? What is the uh, liability of the portal uh, to either the issuer uh, or the investor stroke donor? Um, because that should be the determinant of how much capital they, they should have. Um, legally, typically, what, what, what are the liabilities that uh, the portal have to bear? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, under the proposed regulations, uh, the funding portal would be the one who do the due diligence on the issuers that they post on the website. So, uh, to do to, uh, in doing that, they would have to expose to the list because investor would sue them if they post some kind of fraud companies or the papers company or some kind of scam because the you know the funding portal would be the one who posts the information on the website. But for the accuracy of the information, the funding portal would say that it's not their own information. If they have some kind of due diligence process, that they check on the, for example, check on the uh, financial statement filed with the uh, registrar. They uh, check on the uh, documents of the companies. They would have some defense. Uh, I could think of the, this is pretty much the major risk legal risk of the funding portal because they post some kind of information on the website, they show that to the investors. If something goes wrong, the investor will sue them. This is, this is pretty much the highest risk that in my, in my opinion. The other thing was, is not that, it's, it's not too risky because being the securities business, they have to comply with the business conduct. If they fail to comply that, of course they will be subject to the liabilities under the law, but it's not that huge penalties is kind of business conduct. So uh, if we're going to think that what would expose the funding portal most to the liabilities, that would be the liabilities to, uh, based on their due diligence, to select the issuers on the website. I don't know whether Kun White would agree with that. I, I agree with that. that uh, and uh, I have to add something that um, the uh, crowdfunding portal, especially for the SME, I think they have. They, they should uh, uh, understand the business of the issuer and uh, check uh, the 
because it's very early stage of the business, so they have to uh, to 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 understand and um, going to um, uh, looking deep in the deep in the business before public uh, to the public. I think this is uh, very important for them. Uh, in the other side, this is uh, their uh, their reputation also, because uh, the crowdfunding portal, they they they. They are start. They like a startup business. They have to uh, to 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 establish uh, their reputation, also. So in the long in the long run, I think it's just, uh, the, the 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 market will be um, uh, uh, growing by natural. I think it's just, uh, it's, 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 it's uh, my point of view. Actually, could I was one of the, uh, the, the persons that give the positive opinion on our proposal on the uh, duties of the funding portal to do the due diligence. Because to be honest, some of them tend to think that it's too much, you know, too burdensome. How could we do that? Because, you know, you allow a lot of issuers to raise the fund. You, you didn't, you, I mean, SEC didn't prescribe any uh, standard that up to the IPO, of course, we couldn't do that in terms of the crowdfunding. And, you know, to let the funding portal do some kind of due diligence is too difficult. So, yeah, some, somebody said that as well. But Kun Wai was the one of the uh, person that said that it's kind of reputation of the business operators. You know, if something go wrong, probably it's not affect only one business. It affect the whole industry would be, the crowdfunding would be uh, perceived as some bad things, you know, nobody would want to invest in the crowdfunding any, any longer because if you, you're not going to do that, right? Cap? Hi, I'm um, Gandhi from CRZN. Um, not exactly the questions, more like um, a point, opinion and comments. I would like to support you too, um, Kun Wai and Pichai, about two years of startup need to have the, at least two years track records. Um, support of not to have. Um, <laughs> because um, I don't know, but according to my experience, if you start after two years, um, you're probably reinventing the wheels. You know, you have to check back, you know, when in two years starting. And that's exactly the, the very same experience that we have in other industries that we'd like to support. Um, another thing that, well, because it's two years, if you actually set that, or even a year, or a half a month, or anything, it's the big key indicators, it could actually beat the purpose of crowdfunding. Because um, at the point of view of the startup, we would like the crowdfunding platform to, you know, that's an alternative to get the funding, to get idea up and running, so we, we can get the funding and we perhaps, you know, adjust the idea, get to be more better. And most of the startups see the crowdfunding is not just to get the money, but it is the way that we can test the market, feasibility of the business in the future. So the idea is to support you, that you don't support the two years time frame. So that is what I would like to extend opinion, you know, in the, as a voice of startup, the young crowd. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, my name is Song Kiet. Uh, yes, uh, I think the crowdfunding portal is really interesting. Uh, we are we seeing a lot more and more uh, investment from especially in the South Asia market, especially uh, the operator from Singapore coming in. Now, uh, my, uh, some concern on the regulation part is, uh, number one, is the crowdfunding portal will be, can be able to manage by a normal, let's say, a commercial company with uh, whatever numbers of, uh, amounts of registered capital. The other question is, uh, You've been talking about rules and regulation on uh, uh, putting the, the, the um, initial capital. I think my, uh, my view is uh, as the crowdfunding portal basically is designed and meant for small SME company who are now lacking of uh, sources to get fund. So I think uh, they will be trying to, they were hard enough to, to find the money. I think uh, in in uh, my my concern and my my would uh, I would really uh, want the regulator to to really look into it is how you're going to make this uh, happen rather than 
putting a, a certain cap on or cap on the, the initial capital because the risk that we are talking, I think is uh, basically is the same as whatever investment we are doing. So I do not see much of the concerns of the number of uh, registered capital because the portal uh, itself will not be able to responsive for that liability. The last question is, uh, yeah, since I'm pretty new in, in, in this uh, game also, uh, the regulation which it, uh, I don't know whether it's come out already or is in the process of uh, 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 working on that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. For the reg uh, just for the last question, the regulation is developing. The draft is not coming out yet. And we will propose it to the respective authorities within these few months. And for the initial uh, registered capital, it would be applying to the funding portal operators only. It's not going to be applying to the issuers that would like to rest fund to the portal. And yeah, that could be all. Thank you. I think it's just, um, um, uh, it's, uh, it's really important that um, uh, crowdfunding portal, that uh, they have to um, uh, uh, stick to the rule. And um, uh, it, it's very early stage for, for, for the crowdfunding uh, in Thailand. Meanwhile, we are talking right now in the crowdfunding regulation and rule. Um, the, the outside, lots of investment, no rules, no regulation happen. And it's, 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 it's happening every day. Uh, angel investment, and the angel investor put the money uh, without doubt without um, any clue to the business. Maybe two million baht, one million baht every day yeah, to the startup. That's another part that uh, we have to regulate or we have to help them or support them uh, for, 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 the, for the angel investor also. So it's, it's, uh, I think it's a good start for, for uh, we, ha uh, we have SEC here to, um, to, to create or to regulate something. And uh, I think this will be the, um, the standard for, for, for another investment or another type of investment in Thailand also. Thank you. Actually, at this part, the SEC would like to ensure that the regulation that will be issued will be workable, it will be practical for the business as well, because um, we are not going to issue the regulations. We work hard on that. It's not practical. It's not workable. Nobody wants to use that. So we want to open up for it, for the comments. And even though we had uh, had the public hearings and many focus group meetings already, we we we're still open. For, for the comments, if not today, later, we are wel oh, remains welcome, always welcome. Kun Hong Sin, yes, please. Um, I have this question of, um, you know, I, I'm someone that I cannot take no for an answer usually. <laughs> so uh, I am also not forcing an answer for yes, but I'm with all interest at heart for Thailand crowdfunding to take off in the space of uh, uh, equity crowdfunding. Um, you know, there is really no hard and fast rule about one year or two years, but with the intention of really wanting to take this off, what could be possible for Thailand crowdfund, uh, Thailand SEC to identify or to call for even interested party who are keen to do or work on equity crowdfunding to come for, to identify a few and test drive, you know, test drive the market feel the market, know who, it, who are the people behind it. Then, you know, with a foot forward of getting this motion going, then when, the, when you can see that, when you start to build more confidence, then you can exercise those regulation in a more uh, assured way. So I, I am not sure whether uh, this could be possible for Thailand SEC 
to identify the people who are deeply passionate in this specific space for Thailand companies who are interested to do this and then work together with even startup uh, and the industry then um, in the next six to nine months put this into some exercise before you actually launch it on one hand Thailand SCC got a chance to actually exercise and practice the regulations on the other side uh, the startups could be Dr. Gandhi's or you know or Kun Wai you know or even my team to really look at what we need to do to get this started, get this moving. Um, as what quoted by Jason Bess uh, was sharing yesterday is that, you know, uh, in US, the SEC doesn't just happen overnight. You know, it took them some time before it actually materialized to where it is today. And even to today, they are still treading very carefully to say from the one million uh, cap to the five million potentially, whether if that is going to be extended. So uh, I seek for Thailand SEC to consider some baby steps, then to bang, you know, this is rules and regulation. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it with re truly with all interest at heart for, for Thailand crowdfunding to take off and for the deep passion for the startups here, um, I believe there are some ways to, to work in there. So I, I'm not sure whether if you can help to answer this, whether if it's possible to do this. Well, thank you, Kun Hong Sin. I think uh, to, in terms of listening to, to the comments and the inputs from the uh, person who's been expert or the participant or potential players in the crowdfunding, I feel uh, we are welcome, of course, but we, we can work out more in which way we could do because during the past year we we, we, we did we did something already I, I wouldn't say that we did enough or not, but we had like four uh, focus group meetings and we we post the public hearings documents on the website and, and honestly, we just found out that yesterday that many people didn't see the public hearings <laughs> on the website. You know, it's usual and, and it's happened. It, <laughs> well, let, let me put it this way. Let's work things out. But to the test drive, it's kind of technically, you know, difficult for the legal issues because I'm the lawyers, because I'm be aware of <laughs> whether or not if the test drive would be violate some law or not. But we, we could listen to the, the comments, we will develop the regulations based on the comments and inputs from the participants or the potential players or who, who else that will be interested in the putting opinions. Okay, thank you. For uh, the startup side, uh, they already, actually they already have something, some kind like uh, a crowdfunding, uh, uh, in equity crowdfunding or, or a market, we call a market like um, take list. You may, you may uh, look at the, the tech list. Uh, this is uh, Esbich from uh, Singapore, I think, uh, from uh, Tech in Asia. They just launched the tech list. They call in for all, uh, all of startup in Asia to uh, register and also for the investor to register inside and they can match each other inside the, uh, the, 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 the portal. Uh, like uh, Angel, Angelis, uh, Angelis is also in uh, U.S. That uh, they call in a lot of uh, startup around the world. I'm list in the Angelis also, yeah. so they know each other in the in in the in, in the network. So they might in, invest in some kind because they connect. They can can contact to each other. They can connect to each other. They can uh, track uh, the history or asking for some uh, recommendation for each other in, in, in the tech list or in angel list. So it might be the way to prove the concept or to, 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 uh, to uh, starting something, a baby step like you say, in, the, in, the, in, 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 in Thailand also. I, 
I'm definitely aware about uh, this uh, general market that is available in America and other rest of the countries. My focus right now is really Thailand, as in, you know, unless you're saying that you're initiating a techless Thailand chapter. So my interest is really about Thailand. And generally, you know, I'm looking at the inflow of investment into Thailand and what can be done with crowdfunding within Thailand and out from Thailand. So I'm looking at branding of Thai innovation, Thai researcher, Thai scientists, Thai entrepreneurs, not just within Thailand, but bringing Thailand out to the world and not having Thailand investment goes to the rest of the country. So potentially, um, you know, definitely a lot of the investors in the room are very aware that they can go to America, go to uh, Singapore, go to, in the, go to any parts of the world. But today, if we want to kickstart and really optimize and leverage crowdfunding to really grow in within Thailand, then I urge the room to think about Thailand and what can we do within Thailand and bring Thailand out to the rest of the world. So, Kun Wai Ka, if you have a tech lease, Thailand chapter, the uh, Guan. Uh, actually, I am start doing it uh, for a, a few months already. Oh, and, uh, I, I have I have to to do it because uh, for now we didn't have any uh, directory or leads of, uh, of the startup in Thailand. Oh. We have to do this. We have to register them, and we have to track them uh, how well of their business of of them or uh, how uh, they got the the funding. In, in, in any state, in all stage. Yeah, so, so they have to report to, uh, to, to, to the system. Yeah. It's just like the picture yesterday, quite a number of them mentioned about Indiegogo Kickstarters. How can we in Thailand actually even get started if every of our contact think of only about overseas portal? So, you know, that's where my role comes in, as in I'm looking really at what I really need to do to help Contai startups or even platform to step up. You know, we, we, we may not be that near to the Kickstarter or the Indiegogo or the Circle Zub or the Our Crowd, but we got to start somewhere. So, you know, that's, that's where I'm saying that if you're starting a tech list, wonderful, a Thai chapter, the mama. You know, and if let's say uh, reference to what uh, Kun Tawachai says that as a lawyer I cannot test drive. Okay, I find another target to test drive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kapunka. Thank you, uh, Kurt Rudolph from Smart Roads. Um, I'd like to, uh, I think, echo. Uh, these comments. Um, I'm a permanent Thai resident. I've lived here for 11 years, uh, although I'm an American citizen. Uh, there are a lot of channels that are close to me. Um, for example, uh, Singapore channels are only for Singaporeans. Um, even American channels, which in principle I ought to be able to access, are very difficult to deal with from here. So, and, and if it's difficult for me, it's certainly going to be more difficult for people who are not American citizens uh, and perhaps don't even speak English. Um, so I feel that it, it's quite important that uh, Thailand come to grips with these issues. Thank you. Uh, any more? Takers for the questions from the floor. Oh, okay. Well, um, that was a very interesting session, and thank you so much, gentlemen, for sharing the design of the legal framework for equity crowdfunding here in Thailand. And we'll take a quick 30-minute break, and refreshment will be served outside, and we'll be back here at quarter two. Thank you.